welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I made this weighted mallet with both soft and hard faces. I wanted to use up some scraps to make this mallet and I had some cedar left over from making the gate earlier in the year so I started to plane off the bevels on the side of this that would normally stop there being gaps but that's no use for the mallet. I then cut everything down to length using a stop block to ensure that it would be the right size although this didn't necessarily matter. I then ripped everything down to size on the table saw and also cut the bevel off the other side using the table saw as it's quicker than planing. I then made a two degree angled cut through the center piece of the mallet. I then found and marked out where I should put each side of the mallet with enough space for the handle so that when the handle is wedged it will fit nice and tightly. I also managed to be very bad at trying to find the centre of something and just had that feeling that it was wrong even though it was very simple numbers. I then drilled a hole through each piece of the centre so there is somewhere for my weight to go in later and it will not be visible then. I then glued on the centre pieces to what is the back piece as I thought this would be easier than trying to glue it all up together but it turned out this didn't really matter in the end as you'll see later and for this I used quick clamps as you'll see but I don't think they clamp very well which is what led to this coming off later in the process of making the mallet. For the weight I wanted to use lead as it is easy to roll up and is also very heavy for the size. This was my first time working with lead like this so I went at it the way I thought I should although this is probably not the best and was a bit difficult to cut through but I don't think it's designed to be cut like this. I then rolled the lead into as tight of a drum circle thing as I could to make sure I got as much weight as possible inside the mallet. I then hammered the lead a bit to try and make it fit inside the mallet which meant I did have to cut a bit off but I thought it would be best to hammer it whilst it was in the actual mallet body but this wasn't the best idea as the mallet comes apart and I'm blaming the quick clamps for that definitely not me just hammering on it so I decided I might as well glue up the whole mallet together 
using proper clamps and a lot more glue this time. So I placed the lead in the center sections and put everything in line, making sure that the angles were the right way and there was enough room for the handle. I also clamped the top piece on as I thought there's nothing more to do to the inside and I don't want to really wait for the glue to dry twice. You can also see one of the corners is nicked on the top piece of wood as it got caught on the table saw blade slightly but as you'll see later this doesn't affect the mallet as they get planed down anyway. Once the glue had dried I unclamped the mallet making sure that everything was lined up well enough and then I found the centre of this again so I could then plane in the bevels that I wanted on this. I then plane down both sides of the mallet so that there would be a flat piece in the middle then it will bevel away on each side as you seen in most mallet designs that are similar to this. I then cut the excess material off the middle and I could have done this earlier when measuring but wanted to make sure that I had enough material for the handle regardless of what size it would turn out. Also remember to connect your dust extraction hose to your saw otherwise you get a lot of dust everywhere as I found out. I then sanded down all sides of the mallet with 120 grit to make sure they were nice and smooth. I wanted to make sure that the ends of this mallet were nice and hard so that they didn't dent when hitting a chisel or workpiece. So I decided to put epoxy on both ends. I didn't have pouring epoxy so I just used 5 minute epoxy which didn't work as well as I would like but fortunately one end turned out fine and the other end didn't but that end got covered up with the soft pad. This also used a lot more epoxy than I was expecting, so as you can see I kind of had to pause and mix up more halfway through. I then used a torch to remove any bubbles that may have formed. I then sanded down all the sides of the mallet again to get rid of any excess epoxy and whilst I'm sanding I just want to mention that I have an Instagram which is shown on screen and I post about the products that I am doing on there. There will also be a scannable link at the end of the video. This is the good side and then this is the bad side which you can see didn't work very well. To cover up the not so good side and to also make it so I had a softer surface for if I need to tap a workpiece, I put an off cut of this felt backed material on one end just using fabric glue. Once the glue had dried I cut off the extra material making sure that I got as close to the sides as possible with the cut so that it didn't hang off and I then later sealed the ends of the material just by melting it slightly with a lighter.
I then measured and ripped down a piece of wood to use as the handle. I drilled two relief holes for when the wedges go in to help reduce any splitting that could occur if you just force the wedges in without drilling. I then cut the slots for the wedges to go in making sure that they, on, they were fairly straight and only went down to the hull. I had some off cut of dark hardwood that I wanted to use for the wedges so I just marked this out and then cut it. I used a belt sander upside down to sand these into wedge shapes so that they would easily fit into the mallet and create a nice tight fit. Also forgetting to put on the dust collection again. I then hammered in the two wedges at the same time as this seemed the best way to me. One of the wedges is slightly smaller and created a bit of a gap but they held the handle on well enough and this gap could easily be filled later. I cut the excess material off and then sanded it down the top of the mallet again to make sure the handle was nice and flush with the top. I then drew out a design that I liked for the handle and that was comfortable for me and used a rasp and file to get this down to rough shape before I sanded it with the random orbit sander and then bevel corners slightly with a sanding block. I then applied a finish to help protect the mallet and make it look more appealing even though it is just something that you hit stuff with. <laughs> 